Hello everyone, it's Kelly Miller here from Play Therapy Connection. Excited to have Patty um, Gonzalez here with me. She is a family um, chiropractor specializing in working with children and families. And we're here to talk with you about spine health and nervous system health, as well as some behavior tips for managing everything that's going on. So glad you're here with us today. Thank you. Um, so much. Yeah, Dr. Patty, can you tell us a little bit about what spine health is and what you're seeing right now? Yeah, absolutely. So spine health really is about the brain communicating with the body. Um, our spine is actually protecting our spinal cord. So when we talk about spine health, it's, it's not so much just pop your back, hope you feel better from a chiropractic perspective. It's how is your body functioning overall? Um, so some of the biggest things that I see are when we have abnormal postures, it's going to affect that communication between our brain and our body. Um, and so one of the biggest things that we're seeing nowadays with everybody being home is more technologies being used. Therefore, we're starting to see more ab what we call aberrant posture, or what we call tech neck is the actual mm -hmm. term for it. Um, and that tech neck is, gonna, is leading to lack of communication between brain and the body. So we're seeing things like, gosh, you could name a hundred, digestive challenges, more headaches, um, behavioral outbursts, um, and just lack of overall function. Um, the way that we should see them. Um, so what we're, what I'm recommending for tech technology or technology challenges is one change in posture. If we can fix that and we'll attach a couple of documents to yeah. help you guys understand what tech neck really is. But normally if we look at it, posture, we should be upright. What we're starting to see more and more with technology is we're leaning forward into ourselves and kiddos, I don't know about what, if you've seen this, but, or they're sitting on couches like this. Um, so a quick, easy tip is to get them even just a little bit more upright or have them bring their knees up and put technology right in front of them. So there's a better posture, um, a more upright posture. Adults, same thing. We can also do some stretching, um, which Kelly will do in just a few minutes or in a moment um, mm -hmm. to give a little bit of a tip. Um, but the biggest thing that I see is the lack of communication between brain and body um, and how it's really impacting overall health. Um, so I want to lead you guys through a quick tip on something you can do that's really easy with the family. You can make it fun. It's called You Want to Live. Um, it's just a stretch, YWTL. Um, so the first one is a Y, your arms go straight up opposite, and you really want to open up as high as possible and out as far as possible and reach, reach, reach. It's going to open up all this, all these stretches are going to open up in here. The Y is here. You drop your elbows for the W, kind of squeeze those shoulder blades together. Um, the T is reaching straight out. Oh, I'm bumping into something. Mm -hmm. Reach straight out and stretch. And then the L is bring up into an L shape and just really squeeze those shoulder blades together. And you'll start to feel activation in this area. Maybe that you have, you're like, oh, that feels very different. Mm -hmm. Now that I've even just done it, hold those for 10 to 15 seconds. You'll start to see um, just a release maybe in some areas or just a, a different ability to be able to sit more upright. Beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Patty. I can already feel some places where I need some extra, extra stretches um, in here. So that's great. And I know that you see a lot of children with that you work through the chiropractic with behavior challenges, but what, um, you know, are some of the big behavior challenges that you're seeing on your end that you would love some support around from a, the behavior standpoint? Absolutely. So a lot of the, it, being a mom myself, um, I start to see that meltdown early afternoon after she's done school, after she's had lunch and she's just kind of like, M and the question really comes, mom, can I just watch something? So when I hear that, I'm like, oh, she needs to just tune everything out for a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's a behavior that we're seeing um, at our house, but I'm also getting things like there's a lot of anger outbursts and a lot of frustration. What are some things that we can do to help one, our families, but two, um, just our community in general? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So a couple of things that I always um, 
like to remind families of is that our children's behaviors are just messages for us to understand, right? So if your child is kind of going into, I just want to go watch something, you know, I would consider that more of like a I'm so overwhelmed, like you said, I just need to shut down. So it's just information for us as a caregiver as to what's going on that feels too much, too overwhelming for them. And maybe it's not necessarily watch something, but could you honor that they're needing to um, have a little bit more downtime, but perhaps maybe it's not necessarily watching something on the screen. Maybe it's listening to music or dancing or you know, just playing outside or, you know, being in their room where it's quiet and maybe reading a book or, or something to that effect. So it's like honoring the behavior but um, and the message, but also, um, you know, potentially maybe needing to redirect kind of their, their strategy and giving them some more options. Awesome. So, and then in terms of the aggression, Again, one thing that we can help us as the caregivers is to reframe the aggression into reminding ourselves as the adults that they're going into a fight response. So there's something that they're perceiving as a threat that's engaging their nervous system to want to fight or to become aggressive. And when we think about a threat, we might not necessarily be associating like a big scary tiger in the room, but when we actually think about threats, there are things that are unknown, unfamiliar, transitions. So then when we look at it in that light, we're like, oh yeah, there's a whole heck of a lot of those happening in our world right now. So just kind of being aware of how much we're asking our little humans to be able to kind of take on, um, I think that that can just be a helpful reframe for us as the caregivers. And then the other piece is that when we are faced with, you know, fears or threats, however you would like to kind of conceptualize that, we often, our brain goes to worst case scenario, but sometimes we don't talk about it. And what I mean by that is, have you had the conversations with your children about what would we do if we actually got the coronavirus or the COVID-19? Um, and linking that to something that the child would actually be able to make sense of. So for example, um, you know, if mommy or daddy got sick, this is what we would do. We, we might go to the doctor to get tested or we might, you know, stay home and, you know, we would take extra rest and maybe I would be in a different bedroom or whatever would fit for, for your family and your beliefs, but actually talking to them about what it would look like and what you would do as a family if one of them got sick or what if the child got sick, what would you do? And making a link to something that makes sense to them would be around the idea of them, you know, saying, remember when mommy got strep throat, you know, back in blah, 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 and how I had to stay in bed more and um, I couldn't play as well and I just didn't have a lot of energy. It could be like that. So it actually anchors something in them that can create some sense of, oh, this is what we would do if this big scary thing happened. So that can be one kind of strategy to help bring down the aggression. And the other one that I'm really talking with parents about is as adults, we're having a lot of probably conversations around things that are making us angry or frustrated or sad about, you know, and we're calling, you know, friend or family member or colleague perhaps um, to discuss those things. And we're just allowing space in those conversations to agree, yeah, this is so hard, this is so frustrating, and I just want to be able to do X, Y, Z. But oftentimes with our children, those conversations are quick to jump to a strategy. So it could be, you know, for example, like, I'm so mad, I just wanna play with my friends. And, right, a lot of times the response is, yeah, but you get to see, we could set them up on, you know, a Zoom meeting, or so mad I don't get to go to school. And then you're like, yeah, but we get to see your teacher 
you know, on Wednesday during the class meeting on video. And oftentimes what children need is just some more space and acknowledgement to actually just have the emotional experience of being sad or being angry and that that can just be okay. Um, so it's just kind of like connecting with their emotion first and, and just allowing a little bit more distance before we actually redirect them. That's so, so helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, both You're personally so and I know for the families that I serve. Yeah, you're so welcome. And we've been doing tons of tips and strategies on our newsletter and our blog. So feel free to, you know, connect with us at Play Therapy Connection. Follow us on, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram. We're on all of those places just to get extra tips and ideas for how to manage children's behavior through this time. And I know, Patty, that you've recently reopened. So tell us how we, families can connect with you. Yeah, so my office is located South Denver. Um, our website is yourhealthelevated.com. Um, so you can find out uh, everything you need to know there. Um, and I'm offering a free postural analysis to anybody who wants it. Um, so you can understand where the posture is. And then if you wanna come in for an appointment, we can do it from there too. Um, I'm trying to work out the details of maybe getting that postural analysis virtual. Um, so it's not something somebody has to come in for right away, but could get some information that way. So um, yeah, we're here to serve and super excited to be open um, and definitely busy for all the patients who are trying to get back on track. So great. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking time to be with us today, Dr. Patty, and I hope this is helpful for everyone. And please, yeah, everyone be well and be safe and know that we're here as a community of um, helpers and healers to support you all right now. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.